Now I'm finally finishing off the installation of the air source heat pump and the unvented cylinder in the classroom down below and I've got to fit this expansion vessel for the unvented cylinder. The other day I was talking to my mate Shazad from Trapex and I said do you do uh, expansion vessel connectors? And he went, yeah, I do two types. I'll send them you, see what you think. So, being a man of his word, that's exactly what Shazad has done. He sent me these two products he makes. So let's have a look at this one first because this is what I'm going to be using on <laughs> this expansion vessel. So let's get on with it and find out exactly what Shazad has sent me. So let's get it unboxed and have a look. Okie dokie. So we get two rubber connectors. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So there it is in all its glory. So what we've got here is obviously this is the nut for connecting on to the expansion vessel. And then we've got two isolation valves and two points. Now this can actually be the connection for a filling loop. So if you needed to put a filling loop on a central heating system, because this can be used on unvented cylinders and uh, central heating systems, but this can become a drain point for checking the expansion vessel. So if it's installed like that, so we've got the isolation valve, so this one here, is where the water would come in from the cylinder well from the cold inlet so we that's obviously got to be open now these valves have been designed so this little cap is how to turn it on and off but your customers should not be turning these off because technically an unvented cylinder there shouldn't be isolation valves which the customer can play around with to isolate the expansion vessel. So they're not normally got lever valves on these and if they do have lever valves on then there's some kind of seal to put on there to stop the customer turning it off. So that would be on and this one would be in the off position and blanked off via the cap. So when you come to check your expansion vessel to see whether it needs charging or not. It's a pain in the backside when you're doing unvented cylinders because you've got to get rid of that pressure and water. So you're opening the temperature pressure relief valve or you're draining the taps, you're wasting a lot of water. So this has been designed so you can come along, isolate that valve. So now this is isolated from the cylinder. You can then connect onto a washing machine hose onto here because this is the same thread as a washing machine thread or you could keep that and put a uh, jubilee clip and a hose pipe on there you could screw that obviously using your rubber seals you could screw that on run that then down to the drain and slowly then open that to relieve the pressure so that would get rid of any water or pressure out of there now you can properly check your expansion vessel here using your pump or your pressure gauge and you can check it here to see that it's set at the correct pressure it should be and then if it does need topping up then this is still open and then you can just top it up with your pump and tickety boo then basically you're closing that one off then opening that one taking that off and then you're back in action 
easy as that. And then if this is connected to a central heating system, then this could be actually connected to the filling loop. And you can still do the same thing because you can disconnect your filling loop and still check your vessel without losing a load of water. So this has been designed by Shazad to save a load of water and to make it easier for installation and servicing. So that's a cracking little piece of kit he's sent me. So I'm going to use this on that unvented cylinder downstairs. Now, central heating, if you've got a lack of space, this has been designed to save you space because everything comes in the kit, as you can see from the picture. So let's uh, see what we've got in here. So first of all, we've got some boxes. So let's get the boxes out. And we have the bracket itself. So this is made of steel, so you couldn't use this because it's made of steel. It looks like it's made of steel. <laughs> yeah, it's made of steel. So this couldn't go on an unvented cylinder. You couldn't use this on an unvented because it's potable water. It's got to be made of brass or stainless steel. You can't use this because it's made of steel. Now this bracket has been designed for an expansion vessel from 2 litres to 25 litres. It all depends on how you're fixing this to the wall. Now if you're putting it on a plasterboard wall, no matter whether you're using these fancy anchors or not, it ain't gonna last. Because it'll just because there's a lot of weight in an expansion vessel when it's full of water. This needs fixing properly. So piece of if you've got a plasterboard wall, I would always fix it, piece of wood, piece of ply, to the studs, and then this screwing it through the the ply. So that's how I would fix it. And obviously if you can get it in a brick wall with little raw bolts, more the better. So nifty little bracket, like I said, is designed if you've got a lack of space. So if you can't get anything near the boilers or the unvented cylinders or whatever you're doing, obviously not using this on the unvented cylinder, you can get this fixed above and tickety boo. So let's see what's in the boxes. Go for the biggest first. So basically, this is what we just looked at. That. And this connects into here. Obviously, you're going to be using paste or PTFE or whatever you use to make threads uh, sealed these days. So that's going to go on to there. Go for the next biggest box. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Oh. <laughs> pressure relief bar, valve. So a three bar, yep, three bar pressure relief valve. So that screws into Again, don't forget your paste. So, they're the two parts so far. So, technically, because of this and this, we could take a vented system and use this equipment to turn it into a sealed system in a nice little neat package. Let's try the next box. These pretty much look the same size. All right, so <laughs> we've got that drain again for here, or this is, remember, your filling loop connection. So if you're, again, like say, changing this from vented to sealed, that would then become your connection point for your filling loop. Then we have a vent. 
with looks like quarter on there. Could be three eighths. Looks like it could be. Is that one quarter? That one three eighths. They could be three eighths. Anyway, that goes into there because we need to make sure we've, it's full of water. And this does have a rubber seal on it. This so you don't need your paste for that one. And then we've got a uh, half inch mail iron to 15 mil compression, which goes into here. Now, I guess you could get a 22 mil compression to half inch BSP connector for in there, rather than using 15 mil. It doesn't really matter, does it? But yeah, there you go. That's what you've got. But if you had a 22 mil pot, anyway, which, whatever you want to do. So I'm guessing this is a pressure gauge. And I guess correct. So that would screw on the top. So you can see now we've got a very compact bit of equipment. Obviously your expansion vessel will be under here. So this is going to save you a load of space and it's made everything in the same location. So obviously filling loop, um, expansion vessel, loop relief valve, in, inlet, gauge, it, it covers everything you need. What a great piece of kit that is. Just remember guys, when you're fixing it to the wall, think about the weight of the expansion vessel if it's full of water. So we can do obviously the same things again if we need to check the expansion vessel is um, doing it all there like we've just seen. But there's more. Yes, there's more. So If you want to dose inhibitor into the system oh I've just dropped one of the earrings I'll get that in a minute then this point here is designed to go on to one of these vessels obviously that's going to be installed like that you're going to have that one closed aren't you that one open so what you would do is that that would be closed unless you're using it for a filling loop, then you can disconnect it, close it, disconnect it. Then you can connect on this incredibly sticky bottle because he sent me this in the post as well, this bottle. And it's leaked everywhere in the, in, in the post. So it just filled the bag inside anyway. So now you can inject it in and then once you've finished injecting it in you can turn off your valve you can disconnect this sticky horrible mess <laughs> out of the way and then you've injected your um, inhibitor in there so as well as being a space saver a connector or a way of servicing adding your filling loop via that, using it as a drain. You can also fill your inhibitors and your cleaners into this system. Obviously for central eating, not for unvented. So, thanks a lot Shazad. I will crack on this afternoon and get this installed and hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.